Back when Ember was first released, we thought two-way binding was awesome. So you go to your edit form and you could start changing something and it would be reflected immediately everywhere else in your app. But that's not great for certain real-world applications. It's relatively harmless here, but it could cause real problems elsewhere. Even here it's causing a problem. You just don't see it yet. See, you probably think this has been saved, but it hasn't. So I reload, and it's back to Sparkachu instead of Spar. And you thought it was saved because it was reflected elsewhere. So for a while, people have been trying to solve this problem through various means, usually pretty complex. I remember something with proxies from a while back. But now Ember Chainset has made it really easy. First, let's install Ember Change Set. Today we're going to be working with our monster form. If you've already seen previous episodes, you may be a little bit familiar with what we've done. But basically, we're just having an input and it's reliant on the model. So it's directly in the model. Then when we call save, the monster form component sends it back up to the edit controller where it does the typical save and then transition. Now let's see what of this will have to change in order to get Ember change set working. So the first is to use the change set helper when we're feeding in the model. You can think of this as a deep copy. It's doing more than that, of course, but that's how you can think of it in order to conceptualize it. Here we're passing it in to the component but not everyone has a component that they can pass in. If you're doing it just in a form, then you may have to do something like with change set model as change set, and then you use change set everywhere. So back to what we have with us. So here we're passing it in as model and we can do that. We're going to go ahead and change this to change set. That is not strictly necessary, but I feel that it'll help us understand what we're actually doing. So we're feeding in the value of the change set. So this is part of the battle. Here we can edit and it's not updating over here. But when we hit save, it doesn't actually do anything. We need to get the change set to reflect back onto the model when we call save. And this is pretty easy. So we're going to go to our monster form component JavaScript. And here when we're calling save, we're going to push it back up to the save in edit.js. We're going to make sure to push up the change set as one of the parameters. So then we'll get the change set from here and then we can call save on the change set instead of the model, and that will propagate it back to the model. So now when we make this change, we'll see that it's not reflected over here yet, but when we hit save, then it reflects everywhere. That's pretty awesome. Now what if you want to be editing something, but then you want to roll back the changes without reloading the page? So you don't want to save it, but you don't want to reload in order to get back what you had before. That's where the rollback command comes in. So we'll start by creating the rollback action in our edit controller. It'll of course take a change set and it'll call change set dot rollback. And that's it. Then we will be sure to pass this down getting passed down to our component and then our component will have an action there which will call the rollback and feed it our change set and then in the handlebars we will have another button pretty similar to this one but saying cancel instead of save. 
Now when you go to edit, let's say we mess up the level, we want to cancel it, boom, done. So those are the very basics of Ember Change Set. It should be enough to get you going, but there is a lot more to this add-on, and we'll be exploring more of that in the coming weeks, as well as the Ember Change Set validations add-on that can go with it.